Hey everyone, in this video we're going to build a, a dynamic navigation system like you see here. So these correspond to a certain project um, properties as you'll see in the designer here shortly. Uh, this exploits or uses, I should say, uh, a new function that was added in Ignition version 8.1.4. Uh, the function is system.perspective.getprojectinfo. Uh, it's a function that essentially returns metadata about your project. Uh, you can pass in a project name, so it doesn't even need to be the project you're currently in, which is useful. Uh, but uh, among the data that it returns is a list of objects that include your page, your pages of that project and the URLs that they correspond with. So something I wanted to do last summer, but I couldn't do with the, with the functions that were available was to create a navigation system that um, that looked at all the perspective URLs and kind of mapped them out. That way our users didn't need to remember this long, hideous string. Uh, and now we can finally do that. So here's what it looks like. Here's how it functions. Uh, it's basically a navigation system. You can click on this and then go to your view. Uh, these views are empty, of course. This is just for testing. They just have a label to show you that it that it is. In fact, a new view, um, I have different sections here. Uh, the cool thing is that it's dynamic. You don't need to maintain this. So let me demonstrate this. And it's dynamic and the only thing you need to remember is how you set the URL. So let me add, for example, say I have a new view I want to add in the IT folder here. Uh, let's call it monitoring or something i don't know so there's a specific uh, structure for your url that you want to use but otherwise you add it you add the url here so we can call it monitoring let's go ahead and create this view let's save go back to our session uh, refresh and you can see that monitoring pops up here which then goes to our empty view so it is dynamic and you can also see this is there's another test here you don't necessarily need to put it on in the it folder so let's say you have a new folder called test and then inside this test folder you want to have a new view called servers or something i don't know I'm not creative but let's call this it servers Okay, save, open up our session, refresh, and then you can see IT servers pops up and it redirects us to our page. So as you can see, it doesn't necessarily have to do with folder structure, the way we set it up. It has to do with the URLs that you set. Okay, let me get rid of these, <clears throat> these views to clean it up a little bit. Okay, delete, and then Get rid of these. Okay, that's it. Uh, this is an, a pretty exciting project, something I've wanted to be able to do, and I think it'll make your projects cooler and easier for your users and operators to use. Anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing is you want to make sure you have the newest version of Ignition. So as of this video, the newest version, uh, stable version is 8.1.4. Uh, there is 8.1.5 nightly, that's the nightly build, but 8.1.4 is the newest version. And this step is important because we will be using a function that is only available starting from 8.1.4. So uh, if you need to, you want to go ahead and download the newest version of Ignition before we even start this project. That way you can use the function that we're going to use here. So after you're running 814, you can verify it either here or in your gateway. Um, you're gonna want to go ahead and log in to your designer and let's go ahead and create a new project. So this project will be named Perspective Navigation or something like that. navigation 
All right. Uh, default database we select our database we added. This will be a navigation page for this project. Uh, well, actually, let's call it my business. Shoot, I can never think of good names. Okay. There we go. There's a fake business. If only it was that easy. Okay, let's create a new project. <clears throat> uh, the function I was talking about a minute ago is uh, this function here, get project info. So what it does is uh, you pass in a project name. It takes one parameter here, project name, and then it returns a bunch of metadata. Metadata is just basically data about data, data about your data. So part of what it returns is this page configs variable, which is a list of objects. And the object has two properties, URL and primary view. So if you've ever um, disliked the perspective session URLs, uh, because you have to put in data, client, perspective, and then remember which order it goes in, uh, this will be helpful because it'll allow you to pass in a project name, and then you can get our, all of your URLs and uh, the primary view that the URL points to, and you can easily create a navigation page. So uh, one thing I wanted to create since last summer uh, was a navigation page. That way users can uh, see that page when they log in, and then they can uh, click on the cl on the correct link and be directed to the correct page. Uh, but there wasn't really any way to do it before this function was available, like since a week ago or something. Uh, there wasn't an easy way to do it. You can get a list of projects uh, from the gateway. You can parse the XML that it returns or whatever. But there wasn't really a way to get URLs and the primary view appointed to, as far as I knew, until this function here came out. So I saw it on the release notes, so I thought it would be this would be a good project to make. So this is the function we'll be using. It'll be at the root of what we'll be doing. So let's go ahead and go back into the designer. Uh, we're going to create a few folders here. Uh, we're mimicking uh, a manufacturing facility or something, just a regular business. So I'm going to create five different folders here. Um, so this one we can call production. I want to mimic a business. Uh, and then inside each folder, we're going to create three different views. So let's go new folder. We can call this one quality. New folder, call this one maintenance. Just uh, common departments businesses might have. This isn't really important. Uh, you adjust this to your place of employment or to your project accordingly. Uh, the folder names, I thought they were important because, so let's go back to this function here. Uh, your primary view, this will be a path and your path will include the folder names. But then I realized that when you create your URLs, as you will see here in a minute, you can add, um, you can prepend anything you want. So you can modify the path and we'll use that for our section names. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here shortly. So inside each folder here, let's add a couple views and we want to add views in a pretty specific way. So it doesn't really matter what the view is let's go ahead and add assets and then you want to set a page url right away how we're going to do it we're going to uh, take our section and then from our section or from our group here the it group or the it department you can organize it however you want uh, let's go ahead and say assets so the actual view so our folder and our view and you'll see why we do it I do it this way there may be a better way I'm kind of learning as I go here I didn't build a similar project like this yet so let me go ahead I'll speed this up here so I'll do the same thing for these five folders you can adapt this to your project um, you might already have the pages and the views built out maybe you just want to modify the page URL 
you'll see why we do this and you may even think of a better way of doing it than this. So um, watch a little bit further and then you can decide what you want to do. But this is the way I'll be doing it. So I'll create this view and then speed up the process. So you don't have to watch me creating views. Okay. So you may have noticed uh, this here. So in, I, in the IT folder, I have an assets view and in the maintenance, I also want to have an assets view. Well, if you named the IT folder with the page URL of assets, then you wouldn't be able to use that for the maintenance assets and there will be other ones. So the document I'm looking at is this one here. So for example, maintenance has assets and IT also has assets. Um, IT has documentation, so does quality. So that's the reason I'm prepending. In the URL, I'm adding this as, as part of the path. We're not gonna need to remember it. Uh, this is the way I decided to do it. There probably is a better way to do this, but I'm going to prepend the department or the group, the section before the actual path. That way we can then parse, um, parse, use this function and then get the path split the path on the delimiting character so that way we can name our sections and then organize our navigation screen so let me name this maintenance and then assets there we go Okay, so now we're adding the last view. So if you look at our file structure, uh, we have three views in each folder or in each, in each group. Let me go ahead and save. Uh, and you notice that I have <clears throat> assets, an assets view in IT, an assets view in maintenance or documentation and quality, also documentation in IT. And then if you go to our paths here, so say I named the IT documentation folder just or view page just documentation well then I can use documentation again for quality so this way it's a standardized uh, format so if you wanted to for example documentation basically it'll, it'll give us a way to differentiate between the IT's documentation page and the maintenance or the quality documentation page. So let me just add a label um, and then just name each page. That way we can see the difference and then we'll work on our navigation page. So I'm just going to go ahead and in each page here or in each view, I'm using these terms very loosely. I should be more careful. I'm just going to name this IT assets. That way when we click on it in our navigation, uh, we can tell that the page is actually changing. So I'll speed this process up. You can do whatever you want. You'll probably already have these pages built out. So you don't really need to do anything. Skip this part if you feel like that will be the best thing. So I'm going to go ahead and name these. Just set a label. There we go. Another thing with 814 is that when you click here for style, it has this properties here that you can then hover over and get a bunch of properties. So this isn't hugely beneficial to me as I usually remember, or just use this little book to see what CSS properties I can actually style, but uh, it is there. So since 814. So let me just add a padding left of 15 pixels. And 
Let's put down color green and oops color color name this one here white and then I can copy this style Alrighty, so there we go. Uh, we have each of the folders has a view that just has a label and uh, yeah, that has a label and then the name of the view. And then we have different colors for the different departments, you can say. This is just to differentiate. Okay, so now that we have those built out, we can actually add our navigation view. So let's create a new view here we can call it navigation. You can call this obviously whatever you want. And we can leave it as this navigation view. Let's go ahead and create this view. So what we want to do now is we want to use this function. Let's go ahead and make sure we can actually use it. So there's an example in the documentation. Um, actually, there is no. This is a new function, but we should just be able to, to use this function here. Um, so when I used, when I tested this out at work, I did even pass in a, pro, a project name because of how new the function is. So I'm just going to try it again here. Um, oh, okay. So, so we can't actually use the perspective module because it's not tied to any perspective session. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and copy this here. I knew that. Um, so what we could do for the time being is let's just create a binding. This is just, uh, we're going to need So I think there's a prop. Let's just do ID, it doesn't matter. So I, what I wanted to do is a script transform here. And then we can return this project info. Okay. We can see that there is, it is valid, so we can use it. Um, what if we pass in the project name? Okay, this is what I was getting last time. So maybe this function is not fully but it passes in the current project, which is fine. That's fine for our purposes. So what we want to retrie actually retrieve is this page configs um, list. So let's just go ahead and add a page configs. I forgot already if I copied it. So let me copy this, go back uh, and then add a page configs key. That way we can Okay, there we go. So this is what I was talking about here. So your primary view, there's two properties, your URL and this we can append to our base URL as you will see. So if we, for example, launch session. So this is your base URL, yours will look different. And then we can append dash navigation. So we're gonna just append this part of the URL to the session URL here. So if we append dash navigation, if I save this, you would have seen it, sorry. Then there you go. You can see our view. This is weird how there's characters. You can see words up there. We'll deal with that later though. So you can see that it returns this object URLs and primary views. So remember what I was saying. So if, <clears throat> if more, if you had more than one view named the same thing or a similar function like documentation, the better way would be to build it so that you can use the same documentation view, both for IT and quality, and then just filter by a department or something. But if you have two different views that have the same function, so quality documentation and then IT documentation, um, that way you don't have 
conflicting URLs, we added this here. So let's copy that and actually paste this. And then you can see we, we hit our quality documentation page or view. In this case, it's synonymous. Okay, anyway, that is the demonstration. So we're going to be using that function. Uh, I don't know which, how I'm going to build this out exactly. I know that you can build it out very cool, a very cool looking view uh, with web dev, but I'm going to try to use perspective components. So uh, I, I could use a flex repeater um, and embed a view like a markdown component that's styled, or there's a couple of ways to do it. So let me research a few different ways and think of how I want to do this and then um, I'll come back when I decide and we will continue with this project. But first, let me show you what I have in mind. I should have done this before. This is what I'm thinking. So our departments here will correspond to these section headers. Uh, so for example, we have IT, production, quality, sales, and uh, whatever else we had. I don't remember the fifth one. Uh, and then our actual <clears throat> project names will go under and then when you click this will be a hyperlink and when you click on these so when you click on IT documentation it'll take you to the documentation page and then you can also embed the navigation inside a different view you may have a dashboard already uh, you may have like an expand and collapse feature for your navigation um, so then you can use it however you want so let's go back to our designer I'm going to decide what component I want to use and then we can continue with this project. <clears throat> okay, so I think I decided what component I wanna use. Um, mostly I just wanted some water. I was thirsty. I think I'm going to use the markdown component uh, since it'll be the easiest, in my opinion, to style and we don't have to deal with embedded views or a flex repeater because I believe you need to pass in a, in a view into your flex repeater. So let me test one thing before I make this final. Let me see if if I attach or if I add a hyperlink and a markdown component, if I can click it, which seems like I should be able to. Okay, so let me grow this. There we go, that's why. And then let me also grow this guy. Boom. It's a weird issue, it's overlapping. Um, okay, that's fine. We're going to get rid of this label anyway. So inside our markdown, I forgot what the syntax is. Markdown syntax or hyperlink. There we go. So there should be, there's a lot of great guides on Markdown. The Markdown component is a very uh, versatile component. I find myself using it a lot. Um, so let me find, there's, you can create lists, tables, paragraphs, you can add code images, but that's not what I want to do here. I want to add links like this. There we go. So let me go ahead and copy this add it to my markdown here. Okay, so in, in here, I want to add this. Let me save and see if I can... Uh, stop. I believe it's called navigation. There we go. My favorite search engine is DuckDuckGo. Sweet. Okay, so yes, let's use the markdown Component. With this component, we can uh, use a Python map. We covered maps a few videos ago, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Let us get rid of this label. First, we can copy our script. So this, cancel, and we can delete. Really delete? Yes. So the cool thing was mark with Markdown is that you can also use HTML. So you can pretty much, I don't think you can do custom scripting. 
I was actually tripping up on this. You can't add, well, anyway, that's a whole nother topic. Let me go ahead and modify. Uh, so property, what I want to bind to here will be, I'm looking for a project. Well, I guess title will work fine. There we go. That works fine. And then we can do a script transform. I haven't ever used a map transform before, but you may be able to do the same thing. I'm just going to use a script transform because, because that's what I'm more familiar with. So our title is equal to value. And then we can say this, we can call this page configs. So pages, pages, and then, so let's return. Okay, I know what we will return. We'll return this, copy this. Let's go back to our script. So what I want to return is the title. Well, I guess let's let's just return pages for now. Pages. There we go. So we want to return. Let's map over. Page map is equal to map lambda lambda x y because we have two properties we have a url url path and we're going to iterate over our pages that's our iterable and we're going to return this here so we're going to return our title Maybe we don't even want that. Let's call this plus. Okay, and Let me figure this out and I'll fill you in. Also, if I look at the camera at this angle, it looks like I'm a freaking mountain lion. Okay, I think I'm happy um, with how the, the project looks so far. So I will uh, attach all of this code somehow. I'll add it to the description of this video. Also, it isn't that much code here you can see here, all of it is. I'll attach it somehow. I'll, I'll post it on Discord or something. But basically what this does, let me go through, through it line by line and then show you what the result is. So this per page props title, of course, is a binding um, to page props title. It just gives us um, our perspective project name. So in our case, it was the web lab here we see. And then we're going to do a few things. So we're going to import a, def a default dictionary from collections. Um, I'll explain what this is here in, in a minute. Project title is just value here. And this is just a friendlier name, root URL. Let me show you what root URL is. Okay, so root URL, I created a shared script called, and I placed it in shared.env.rooturl. It's basically like functioning like a tag. So if you go to perspective uh, or actually scripting and then click on project library, I created, so new package, I called it shared. And then new script, I called it env. And then inside here I have a, I have a URL that way if this thing ever changes, we can just, uh, modify it in one location. You can also use a tag, a user defined tag for this. Um, I've done it both ways. I'm not really sure what the benefits or drawbacks are of either approach. 
but this is what that is. So this is just what is prepended to every session in a browser. Okay, let's go back to, okay, let's go back here. Pages, this is the new function that this entire video is supposed to be about. Uh, departments is a dictionary. So I initially defined it like this, like that. But the problem is um, I couldn't assign values. I can assign a dictionary within a dictionary or values within a dictionary within a dictionary because, um, well, anyway, it was complicated, but it didn't exist basically. So I looked it up on Stack Overflow and uh, I found this solution here to use default dict function. So I got it off of Stack Overflow this, and then I loop over the page it, uh, for each page in the pages. I manipulate these. Um, this, of course, is highly dependent on how you set up your URLs. The nice part of uh, about setting up your URLs in the way that we did is that we um, our projects can be all over the place. It's not dependent on the folder structure, which we will demonstrate here shortly. I'll show you what that means. Uh, you can debug this, so copy paste into script editor and see what it does. And then, so I create, I generate a data structure that looks like this, basically like this. So I have, it's a dictionary. Inside this dictionary, I have, uh, so my departments. And then inside the department object, I have the specific pages that go to that department. And then <clears throat> within the specific page, I have URL and basically a page title. So that's what happens. <clears throat> and then, hold up, let me close this tag here. Okay, and then for this, it or, or this um, loop, I'm looping over the new data structure. I'm looping over this here. I'm going through department by department and building it out that way. Uh, that way our links show up in the correct department. You will see what this is here. And then I use a map. So for in each department, I want to, the map loops over. So this loop is for each department. So one, two, and so on. I wanna loop over these pages. This is what the map does here. The map loops, loops over the actual pages, okay? Uh, this is HTML code. Very simple. It's just a simple div. I use a header um, and then an anchor with an href. And then I return the source with a closing div. And this is the result. The result is a navigation menu that is dynamic. This is why it's important because realize that you could just set up a database table and then try keeping track of um, the titles of your pages and the URL locations, but then it gets cumbersome, especially if you're working with more than one developer, then you have to remember to add the page every time. But if you do it this way, you get a page such as this. Let me launch a session. So let me save this. Um, I believe I have a session open here. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my project title with the web platform. Here's my navigation page. So you could set it to go to this page on startup. And then you see that I have these sections here, sales, production, IT. And then if I go hit it, hit orders, I'm, I go to the orders view. If I hit the customers, it's customers, production. I can see documentation here. So you can style this however you want. You can actually use other components. You don't necessarily need to use a markdown component, but what I was envisioning it is a markdown component that hides, kind of auto hides. Maybe there's an icon here and then it sits inside your project. So that way, if you ever need to go to the nav, uh, to a navigation, you have a left hiding navigation. Okay. So to have that sort of dynamic behavior where you save and then you refresh your page and your new page URL appears, you actually need to do uh, one thing. So 
a, f a few things here. Uh, let's go to session events. On page startup, I want to send a session message to refresh the binding on a markdown component. Uh, that's my one gripe with markdown components is it seem I don't really know how to trigger refresh um, easily. So what I'm doing is I'm sending a message from on page startup on the session event. I'm sending a message. This will make sure that uh, whoever makes a change and adds a URL, it'll appear. And then also I need to go on my markup and actually listen. So I made a message handler. So you can see here on my session events and my message handler. So on page startup is sending the message and then my component is receiving the message. Uh, make sure to click listen scope for session here because I scoped it to session. And uh, it sends a message and then the markdown component receives the message. And what does it do? Well, it just refreshes the binding of the source property. So I added a message handler. This type here should match this name you pass it. And I wanted to name it something specific. That way, if I ever use a refresh somewhere else on a table or something, it doesn't conflict with this refresh here. Okay, <clears throat> that's the bulk of the project. It's a dynamic menu system. You can call it that. Um, I didn't think it through all the way. So if there are holes in the logic or if this sort of system is not even useful, let me know in the comments or in the Discord. But that is it for this project. I hope you found it useful. Um, I spent way too much time trying to get it to work, but I think it was a cool project and um, I think it was time well spent. Anyways, thank you for continuing to watch my videos. Hopefully this was worth your time and I'll see you in the next video.